Good afternoon, crafters, and welcome uh, to Christmas tree de well, Christmas trees, not decorations as such, but making little Christmas trees. Um, when you're when you're decorating your house at Christmas, and you know you look at your mantelpiece or you look at your shit bookshelves and you think there's just a space there that something small would go in. Well, I'm going to show you how to make something small to go in that space. Um, they're all Christmas trees. They're all based on the same basic principle of a cone shape. So um, quite often you will see these in shop. These are polystyrene cones, forms, for uh, making what we're going to make today. But if you've watched me before, you'll know I've, sort of, I've got this thing about not using pl plastic and polystyrene anymore. So I tried to think of an alternative. And, and the other week, just before Halloween, I was making witches' hats with some children and I discovered a method of making a cone shape that is relatively easy. So I'm going to show you that today and then I'm going to show you how to decorate your basic tree. So if you, I'll just show you a few examples of what I've been up to this morning. So basically a cone shape and then you decorate it. So this is, this is the simplest and easiest one. And it's wrapped with um, yarn. And it's got just a string of um, sequins around it. You don't have to put sequins on. You could put little beads. You could put little stars. You could put whatever you like on it. But that that's your basic simple one and that small one. You can do them in any size you like because you're cutting your own template. Um, so the next size up would be this one and the medium tray. And what I've done on this one is put a base on it. So the base is basically just a wood slice, which I've made a hole in. Well, I haven't I made a hole with this one, I've glued this. The trunk on this one is actually a cinnamon stick, so it does have a nice smell, and I bought lots of cinnamon sticks. Um, I like to use them at Christmas. The tree bit, this is just crepe paper. Now, when I made this this morning, I wasn't awful happy with the crepe paper, so when I show you, I'm going to use felt, but you can use either, but I'll show you how to, it's the same method, you just use a different um, medium. So that, that is the medium tree, not to be confused with, you know, psychic. And this is the tall tree. So these are my, my tree shapes. I've done three sizes. This one's just got fluffy white yarn, so it's like a chenille yarn. I put a little sparkly bot um, pom-pom on the top. And the base on this one, to make it taller, is actually a bamboo skewer. Um, the other thing you can use is natural twig. So I've been out in the garden and picked this this afternoon, so I'm going to use that when I when I come around to showing you, to demonstrating to you. So the final one I've made is, because I made one of these last year and I really liked it, it's based on the little cone, but you use pipe cleaners and, and beads, and I put a little star on the top of that one. So I'm going to show you how to make the basic cone, and then after that, how, how I've decorated the different ones. So... Um, Equipment, you don't need a lot of equipment. You need glue of some description. So again, we've got the infamous hot glue gun, which, you know, I'll end up burning myself again. Um, you need uh, felt of varying descriptions, create paper if you're using the, what's made the paper tree, um, pipe cleaners, so you can use, well, any colour pipe cleaner, really. Um, I've used white. White, green and red are very Christmassy colours. That's what I would generally use. Um, Again, beads, any colour you like. Um, it's entirely up to your taste. So what else have I got here? Sequins, little pom-poms, yarn, card. Card's the most important thing. So with the um, the cone shape, what you need to cut out is that kind of shape, which is like quarter of a circle. These make a nice tall, thin cone. If you wanted your cone to be um, broad around the bottom, so the bottom circumference bigger. You just make your 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 section of a circle bigger. I'm not really making that. Does that sound clear? I'm going to show you how to do it because that will be it'll become apparent when I show you. So if you just bear with me while I pop this camera down, so that you can see what, oops, what my hands are doing. I'm just going to have to twiddle a bit because my, that's it. My tripod keeps moving. And last time I was on, I dropped you. Which way is it going to go? Sorry about this. We're just a little bit. 
Can you see my hands now? Right, yeah. So basically, I'll, I'll show you with the small cone because it's easier for you to see. I'm just going to move that back slightly if you don't mind. You keep moving around. There we go. And um, I've used A4 card. Um, I'll just get, show you the. And basically what you do is you decide how high you want your tree to be. So my mine are um 14, 18, and 22 centimeters uh tall. So you will <laughs> look at that measure now. Wait a minute. So take your tape measure and from the corner of your card, measure, we'll do this one 14. Measure your 14 centimetres up there and make a mark on the card. And do the same there. And then just by holding the corner of the card, holding your 14 centimetre point on your tape or your ruler, just make marks going round. So you're making like, so it's pivoting around the corner and you're making sort of an arc. And then you just join, just cut it out by joining those. And as I say, I've made, this is the small one, um, mine are 14, 18 and 22 centimetres. Um, if you do a 22 centimetre one out of a piece of A4 card, you can get, you can get a 14 one and a 21, 22 one out of it. That's the 22 size, the big size. If you see there, it just fits on the piece of card. Um, so, you know, it's with the small one. So that's what you get out of one piece of card. So I've used that, that. I don't know what you can see in this light. It's a very pale green, like a pale sage green. I've also got some in this bright green. So that's, I've made one small one there. I'm going to cut a, a medium one out of this green. So I can show you all three sizes. So, by, by cutting a template, you're saving yourself a lot of time and measuring. It won't be a million. It won't be a million percent accurate. You might have to do a little bit of trimming once you get your your colon stuck together, but um, that's easy enough to do. It's just so you don't have to be 100 percent precise. So that's your medium corn. And out of the dark green card, I'm going to do one, one of the large corn. So again, just place your template in the corner. And this one is taking up the whole piece of paper. So it might only be 21 centimetres, actually. And keep your, keep your templates for next time. You can, also, you can also make these out of um, scrapbook paper. If you've got double-sided scrapbook paper, um, or even single-sided scrapbook paper, it tends to be slightly weightier scrapbook paper. So it, it makes nice cones. You could just cut them out of your paper and you wouldn't need to decorate them. Same with anything like a gold metallic or a patent metallic. They make lovely things and all you need to add, do then is maybe add a couple of beads. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to stick your cone together. So as I said, I'm using hot glue. So there's my hot glue gun. Um, as, as you, if you've watched me before, you'll know I'm lethal with them. This is the quite quite difficult because you need to get the point at the top. And my card is quite thick. So one little method I found is if you I don't know whether you can see me. If you take it to the edge of the table and just run it over like that, over the edge of the table, it just gives it a little bit of a curve. Enough of a curve for you to start maybe rolling it into your corn chip. What, what we're trying to do is get a proper point at the top, and it is quite difficult. Um, I've resorted to sort of bending it with my nail and then rolling it tightly um, like that. So it's a lot tighter than you want it to be, but it does help you um, get that point right. So you may find you need to squash it. You can always push it back into shape. But one thing I would recommend, which I don't usually use, I'm going to put a couple of glue dots on it before I put 
a hot glue on just because I find they do help hold it together. They won't hold it together permanently. They're not that strong, but they will hold it while you glue it. So I'm just going to roll that and hopefully that will hold enough. And then the same, I'm going to do one at, at the bottom. Try not to overlap too much or you'll lose some of your, your size. So I am going to just so you can see that it's holding it, but it isn't going to hold it forever. So what I'm going to do now is go down in, in this join with the glue. So wish me luck. <laughs> um, try not to put too much glue on it. Just right along the edge, the open edge, little line of glue. You're going to make, so that's my glue on, and then just hold it. Press it in, mind your fingers. There probably is some sort of geometric formula to make a cone, but my maths days are long gone. So I, I just wing it. So there's my cone. Can you see it's got a bit of a tilt? So what I'm going to need to do is probably trim this. So if you put your seam, to the middle and then just basically just trim it so that it is on a curve um, just along the bottom there so the curve is even on both sides and that should even it out a bit so then when I stand it it, it stands upright it doesn't um, wobble or lean to one side just reshape your cone and that is your basic cone and that's what you do with all of them to make a cone. So um, now you need to decorate it. The first one I'm going to show you is with the felt. It's either, either use the felt or use the crepe paper. I'll show you how to deal with both. It's the same method for both. Um, I started one off with the felt because I thought that's going to be easier than you watching me right from scratch. So pop that one to one side and get my felt. So I started off cutting strips and I started off with wider strips. So about um, an inch. And then I'm getting the strips narrower as they go up so that it, because it, that's what trees do, they do get narrower as they go up. So my next strip is this one and it's, it's slightly, it's, but maybe an inch and a half to an inch. I'm not very good with inches. And all you do is fringe it. So you can see that I've started to fringe it there. Your fringes are about half a centimetre wide. When you're doing the bottom ones, you can make your fringes. I'll bring that in then you see it. When you do the bottom ones, you make your fringes slightly uh, wider. You're going to leave about a centimetre at the top to, gl to glue it. So you just cut all the way along. Keep trying to keep it as even as possible, but it doesn't matter if, if you're sort of slightly out because it's a tree. Trees aren't symmetrical. So you leave the little band at the top for the glowing. Can you hear my dog barking? That's somebody, some very kind person in my village is bringing me a load of leftover craft supplies. And I think that's probably her. She doesn't know I'm online live. I'm surprised you don't hear more of my dog when we're online. Because he's very noisy. Okay, we're nearly at the end. Right. So now you can see I've got this lovely fringed piece of felt. And the other thing is that with felt, as you stretch it, it will they will flick out like this. So I've stretched it as I've gone round and they've started flicking out. Um, with the crepe paper, it's much easier to shape. My, dog, my dog's going through now. Um, it's much easier to shape and curl them up. I'll show you with the, the crepe paper. You can just kind of pull them with your think Oh, not too hard for your finger. And you didn't see that. And they will curl up. But the felt is much more substantial. The paper does tear very easily. So let's, so I've started this off and there are two strips on here, two wider strips 
already. And I'm going to use a narrow strip now. So once again, getting with the glue. We're not using a lot of glue. We're trying not to use a lot of glue. I'm starting at the seam. And I'm just putting a little dot and securing the next um, fringe to it. Leaving about a centimetre gap between each fringe so you've got some nice overlap. So just make sure that, and then just stretching it ever so slightly as you go and just putting a tiny bob of glue. If you wanted, you could use the glue dots to do this, this part of the, the tree. Um, if you don't have hot glue, you could even use, particularly if you're using the crepe paper, you could use a glue stick because um, the hot glue with crepe paper does tend to dissolve it. That's my dog trip trotting back through again. Okay. Need to stick in that. Oops. So you just keep going round with your glue and your felt. We'll just get this one right to the top and then we'll put some decoration on it. So it is entirely up to you whether you put a stem in it or not. Um, the stems are quite easy. You do need supplies for the stems, obviously. Um, I've used, as I said, I used um, bamboo skewer. Don't worry about glue. It will come off afterwards. I think just one more strip on that. So I used the bamboo skewer, um, which I put into a base of a... Um, you know, put into a base. It's a wood slice on my base. You could use anything. Um, you could use um, heavy duty card. You could use um, a little plant pot. That would be nice. Even if, even maybe a paper cup painted to look like a plant pot. Christmassy cup. So that would look like. Um, you know, a proper sort of Christmas tree plant pot. But I like the wood slices. And when I used the cinnamon stick, I glued the wood slice to the cinnamon stick because it's a quite broad base. But with the um, bamboo skewer, you do need to put a hole in your in your wood slice. So either if you've got a drill, a very small drill bit, I used a sharp pointed awl because these the birch wood slices I got are quite soft wood, so you can um pierce through them with an awl. I'll show you later when I've got finished this bit, when we get round to putting the skewer on. And that's the last one. So that's another fringe. So all together on here, I've used one full sheet of felt, one A A4 size sheet of felt. So if you were make, planning them, you, um, you know how much you need. I actually managed to get um, the little craft shop in town where I go, near me, I managed to get felt on a roll. I was so chuffed. And the lady said to me, it's because so many people are doing, wanting to do their own thing and not use plastic that she she thought it was worthwhile and buying the felt on the roll. So I got, because I've got lots of workshops coming up with people, I bought the roll of felt and I thought that's a good idea. I'm not going to run out of felt though. So I'm just going to carry on gluing, get the glue stick back. I'll tell you what's going on my Christmas list, a proper, proper big glue gun because mine's only a little one. And because I didn't know how much I'd use it when I got it, I use it a lot. So I could do with something that's just a little bit more substantial because this one, the glue sticks keep falling out. Right, I'm going to just glue the whole top now because we're getting near the top. Okay, so let's just keep winding till we get right to the top. And then we can decorate. Just need one last bit of glue. I'm gonna leave, can you see that little flat bit because I want to stick a star on it, so that will be ideal. Um, Last bit of glue, let's put the last bit of felt round. And there we go. I'm just gonna 
I'm covered in glue, the tray's covered in glue, but it just peels off, which is one of the nice things about hot glue. There we go. So, can you see? That's our finished tree. It's got nice, um, you can fluff up the branches. I'm going to put a star on the top of it. Um, I've got some star shaped sequins here. I've got silver and I've got gold. And I'm going to put two. I'm going to take two silver ones just because um, I can, I'll put one on each side of this top where I've squished it flat. I shall put one on each side. So, put the glue there, put the glue there. Very carefully, so I don't burn myself. I did get a good suggestion on doing this because I always burn myself. Somebody said use tweezers um, to place things, and I thought that's a good idea. And then stick the other star on. Press them together slightly. And there we go. That is your first tree, and it's quite a simple one. And you could then stick sequins on your, on your felt as you go down so they look like little baubles. I'm not going to do that today because I'm conscious of time. I want to show you the other things I'm going to do. So we'll have a look at the base on this. We'll look at the bamboo skewer. And I will show you if I can find my sharp pointy thing. Uh, there the base is. Just bear with me a second because I'm disorganised as usual. I can have everything out and then I can't find anything. No, I... Misplace my all. Right, well, basically you need to just drill or make a little tiny hole in there and then you would press your bamboo skewer into it. If you were using a natural stick or the um, cinnamon stick, you would glue it on. But this one's got, um, it's flatter on that end and that end isn't, so... You basically would put your, your trunk in and then then fasten it on. So I'm going to show you with the glue. What you need to do is make a big, generous um, splodge of glue and then set that in till it sets. And I would even, once it's in, put another generous wadge of glue around the base. So basically you're creating like a, a mount for it. It takes a little while to set. Then you would put more glue on the top um, of the cinnamon stick and just put your, your tree on it. I'm going to leave that because that's going to take ages to set. You, could, you don't have to put a base on them. You can just have them standing. But sometimes you want something just a little bit taller, don't you? So I'm going to just set that to one side, let, it, let the glue set. It'll fall over while I'm not holding it. <laughs> it has done. We'll just pretend that one, this one's going to stand on its own. So that's that one finished. So the next one I'll show you, I think, is going to be the one with the pipe cleaners because that's quite quite nice as well. Um, you need the small template for it and you need white card. I would use white. If you're using green, uh, pipe cleaners are a different colour, then use a different colour base. It's usually quite a good idea to match your base to the colour of your card because the, the colour that you're putting on it, because then it doesn't look odd if you've got bits of white coming out of dark green. So again, I'm going to um, roll up my cone. That's actually a bigger one. Can't find my little... I think, actually, I did cut it shorter, but we'll we'll go with this one. Now. Roll your corn. Oh dear. Bear with me. Just talk among yourselves. I'm going to use the glue dots again because they do they do help. Put one right at the top. And one right at the bottom. And then just roll it round. It's easier, actually, than I'm making it look. Um, there we go. Glue. Just 
sometimes it's easier if you press it from the inside and then it doesn't burn your fingers quite so much. Again, it's a little bit off kilter, so we'll just trim that flat round so it's flat. That's because in my measuring, it's not awfully good. There we've got our corn to start with. So we're going to use pipe cleaner, but I've got white ones. I do, as I said, I've got green ones somewhere, but I couldn't find them today. So um, you need that one took about four or five pipe cleaners. This one is taller than my original one because I think on my original one I thought no, I don't want it that tall. So I cut my corn a bit. Um, but I'll show you how to do it. It's quite easy. So get yourself four or five pipe cleaners and then some beads. So I've got an assortment of beads here. I've got the gold ones that I use on mine. I've also got some other metallic ones in here, silvery ones. And what you need is a bead. These have come off necklaces. What you need is a bead that the pipe cleaner will thread through. So just double check that your pipe cleaner will go through it. Your pipe cleaner has quite a narrow um, wiry bit. Just fold the end over. That'll stop your, like that, that'll stop your beads going off the end. So, and then you just space your beads randomly along. They will move when you start to wind them round. So you want them, you want to be able to move them about a bit because otherwise you'll end up with, um, I'm going to put gold and silver on this one. If you want to see mine, I sort of ended up with them all in the clump really, which I didn't did, intend to do, but I glued them on before I could move them. So that's another tip. Don't glue them on until you're, You've got them placed where you want them. I'm trying to find some different colour beads. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to be too. Actually, I may go monochrome and do them all black and silver. Could be very stylish. All my beads are rescue beads. I buy jewellery at charity shops and then pull them apart and keep the beads. Um, it's a lot cheaper. It's better for the environment because you're use, reusing something rather than buying something new. Um, and uh, you get much more of a variety. Um, maybe I should have put some more black ones on, but it doesn't matter. So space your beads just randomly along. You see that? I'll quickly do another one and then I can show you how to put them together. So once again, I'm, I'm turning over the ends so the beads don't go shooting out off the end. Not that they do because the, the fluffiness of the pipe cleaner holds them on. And then I've got to randomly thread on my beads. That one, most most jewellery beads that come off a, a necklace, for instance, will, will thread onto a pipe cleaner because it's only a bit of thin wire in the middle. Um, silver. Pearls are nice on this. You have pearl bee, or you could go with uh, red, green, and gold traditionally, whatever color you like, really, that matches your, your usual color scheme. So now we've got some of our pipe dreams ready, we've got our corn. I'm just going to squish that back into shape. And um, I found it was easier to start at the top. So, where you've got your, your, cur your curled a bit, just widen it out a bit and just make like a circle and start at the top so a bit of blue. I don't know whether anybody's out there because once again I'm failing to see your comments. If you are out there and you do want to drop a comment, I will look again after and try and answer everybody if you want to ask questions or you know anything like that. You can also go to my Facebook page, What Kate Made, Kate's Design and Craft. I think the link's usually in the um, comments on this on this post. So now all you do is wind it round in a spiral. When you come to a bead, you can glue the bead separately because that does hold it up quite a lot better than just having your um, pipe cleaner glued. So I'll just keep going round. If you find your beads aren't spread out spread out oddly. Just move your bead. That one isn't going to glue because it's an odd shape. But you don't want it right next to 
your, your other beads. So, and as you get further down, obviously, they get further apart. So just keep winding down and the odd bit of glue as you go. And you'll we'll see as you go on whether you like it or not. I mean, for instance, there's going to be a big gap there. So nearer the top, you're probably better putting your beads closer together on your pipe, on your pipe cleaner. And then I'll just put a little dot behind that that bead. Hold it in place. Keep going round. So that's our first pipe cleaner almost done. I'm going to put the bead right on the end because I think, as you can see, it's coming round to there and I'm going to glue that there. there we go. Then you just start with your next one. Just a bit of glue, start it off. Lost the end now. And then keep winding it round and gluing as you go. That glue doesn't want to stick. So the pack cleaners bend quite easily. Um, and as I said before, if you move your beads so that you're not ending up with lots of beads together, you will carry on right to the bottom to cover all the all the corn with pipe cleaner. I'm just going to go that far because you get the idea and you saw the finished one. So that is that one. So when I come to, when I finish, I, I go back and finish all these things and then I've got a house full of things. So I've not done a very good job of spacing out my beads, as you can see. I'm going to push that one a little bit. There you go. Anyway, you can get the idea. So you go all the way down to the bottom. And then once again, I've put the little star on. So probably with this one, I'll put a silver star. And that's another one. You can do these without a corn. It's, it's not easy. You need to have a form to do them on. So you would use a corn as a form. But you can just, once you've formed the shape with your um, pipe cleaner, it it holds its shape. So you're basically making a spiral that is getting smaller and smaller. So like a coil nearly. So if you make your shape and just, it's not easy to do. I'll use this. You can make your shape. And because the wire, you just do it a little bit further apart. And the way will keep its shape and make like a, a little tree, standing tree. Yeah. Spiral. So you spiral it round basically and then pull it up. So you can do it like that and then you will have just a tree that will stand like that if you wanted to. That just came to me then in a flash of inspiration. Okay, so, so far we've made our belt tree and our pipe cleaner tree. The next thing I'm going to show you is one wrap with yarn. And again, I'm going to use the small one just because it'll be quicker, but you can do it on any size. And I am going to use, oh, excuse me. I've got this lovely silvery Lurex yarn that I've had for a long time. And what I would recommend you do is cut a bit off to start with because using the whole ball, it's quite it's quite difficult to handle. So once you're getting lots of practice at seeing me make these cones, so you should be an expert. Again, I'm going to just use that to help me hold it together. Yeah, I don't know whether you've used glue dots, and they're really good. They are generally a thing for scrapbooking. But they're really good for positioning stuff and, and seeing if it if it holds. Um, 
my other favourite thing is um, blue tack for that kind of thing to sort of like position things before you actually get on and see I'm making a mess of it there we go and then let's make it a little bit wider at the bottom so once again it's in with the glue I'm finding I'm burning myself much less these days when I start to rush that I burn So it's okay if you squash it a little bit to get the shape, because you can always squash it back once the glue's set. Okay, so that's my tree. Here's my yarn. I'm going to start at the top, just because I find it's easier. Bit of start with my bit of glue. Put it down. I'll put it down. The, I'm going down to put it down the seam this time. I'll put a bit on so that I can just. Keep winding. So start at the top and you wind your yarn round. Again, I think tweezers might be a good idea. So just start that off and keep going round. And once you get a bit of rhythm going, it's quite quick to do because you're not gluing as you, well, you know, if you pre-glue a section, you don't have to glue every single strand on just enough to hold it in one place. Well, this is pretty, I like this. And it would be nice if you did a gold one maybe as well. Are you all getting excited for Christmas? Decided what crafty things you want people to buy you. I always want people to buy me crafty things. Either that or bubble bath. Just every now and then check on the back that you're, you're following it, but I'm quite good at winding wool around things now. I'm doing a whole series of these. Um, I've actually got a knot in my thread there where I've rewound it from something else. I'm going to cut that off. I, um, I'm doing a whole series of Christmas decorations that themed things for the virtual village hall right up till um, Christmas now. So please check out every week on the on the schedule and see if I'm on if you're interested. Um I love Christmas decoration. I've got craft fairs planned now and I've got um workshops at home planned. That's mainly what I do now rather than than actually selling my crafts. I like because I, I like to teach other people. I do and it's one of the things I really enjoy. And crafting I think is a very social Thing for me I like it to be with other people with like-minded souls so I'm just gonna carry on with this I think I'll do this one right to the end and then you can we can decorate it together although it's very nice this yarn I don't know whether it'll need much extra decoration I need some more glue There we go, we're halfway there. What's the weather like with you today? It's awful here. It's been awful all week. At least the wind's dropped. It's been very windy. Um, my family have all been away. I've had to stay and dog sit. We have a dog who can't be left alone now and is too old for kennels, so we have to take it in turns to, to dog sit. Oh, get get my son to come and dog sit if uh, we both want to go away. We love him to bits, but he's getting a bit of a nuisance when we can't read him. Okay, we're nearly there. I think I'm only going to go that far on that one because obviously you're watching me. I'm getting a bit bored, so um, we can think about decorations. And again, I've got lots and lots of things in here. I've got um, golden, red and green stars. And I've got um, gold and silver stars. I've got um, 
I've got beads, more stars, and more beads, and round sequins. We might have a look at the round sequins because they'll look like baubles on it. I'm trying to not get them everywhere <laughs> because I'll have it all to clean up afterwards. So there we've got lots of little sequins. And we're just going to dot. This is where, you again, your tweezers will come in handy. Although, I've got the glue now. There we go. See? One thing you can do with sequins is lick your finger, but, you know, you have to be so careful these days to not be licking your fingers that um, I wouldn't recommend that. So you can just dot your little sequins about like that. Can you see? Whoop, that way. And carry on doing that. So, other ideas I've seen done that I haven't got, but I'm not going to show you today. I've seen things like using seams out of jeans, lace, um, gold and silver paper, cord, all sorts of things to wrap around your tree. Um, the last one I'm going to show you is the cord, the first cord I made is just using this fluffy white. Fluffy white yarn, so it looks like snow on it. And this is quite a random thing. You don't need to be precise with this. So I'll cut off the length of the yarn. To, we'll put a, you could use um, a different yarn and make it look like um, tinsel. See, I put my glue around and I'm just gonna stick this to it. So it looks like on a wavy pattern. So we look like we've got um, swags of snow. So I'm just gonna go like this randomly around it with my glue and stick the yarn to it. It's fluffy. Trying not to burn myself. It would look like tinsel if you use like a glittery yarn, wouldn't it? Maybe I need to just tiny bit more. And then when you come back round, you can just cut it off again. Okay, and we will keep doing that. And Stick the yarn again. Now I'm getting all bits of fluff all of my fingers. I look like I've been in the snow. Last bit of glue. So you would keep going round and round and round. Um, I used, I think I said before, I used a fluffy pom-pom on the top. So we could use a green one. Not all of these fit in with my eco-friendly ethos. Um, but I always think if you're going to reuse it every year, then you could maybe just get away with using something that was more plasticky. So I, as you can see, I've Stuck my little pom pom on the top. I'm just going to tilt that up a little bit more so you can see it. Because it's tall, you can't see one of it. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly show you as well how you um, attach your, your stem if you're using a stem. So I'm going to go with this piece of natural stick. I'm going to put a generous blob of glue on the top if I can get any out you have used so much glue these days I don't think this glue is as good as my other glue there we go generous blob of glue on the top and then you just poke it right into the point and hold it till it sets now you can then Either attach that to a base, or you could put a pop it in a 
um, blob of glue, a little wooden base. Um, the cotton reel is quite a nice idea because you can you can wrap that round with uh, wrapping paper, so it looks like a little pot for your um, Christmas tree. So that's Christmas trees. Um, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you've got some ideas. I'd really love to see anything that you make. Um, you can either I lost you there for a second. Sorry about that. You can either pop um, a bit of blue tack into your cotton reel to just give it a little bit of weight. Um, so, and also with your pitch, pictures, that's what we we're talking about. If you take any photographs of any work you do, I'd love to see them. If you send them to me, either message them to me or pop them directly onto my page, What Kate Made, on Facebook. Um, I've also got a website, whatkatemade.com. I'm trying to keep my blog up to date. I have put a few things in. Um, so, yeah, and um, thanks for coming along. I'll get back and look at all your comments. Pop along to my page and say hello. Uh, have a look at other things that I've got on. And um, I think my next one is next week. So I shall see you then, hopefully. Thanks for joining me and good afternoon.